Hello everyone, and thank you very much for your interest in the Cold Steel Sub's Kuro Overlay Program and Zero Field Translation Spreadsheet. This brief video should help you understand how to install the Cold Steel Sub's Kuro Overlay Program, how to operate it, and then we'll show you some tips and improvements for this version of the Cold Steel Sub's Overlay Program to help make your experience as smooth as possible. So first we're going to need six things. A PlayStation 4, a PlayStation 4 Pro, or a PlayStation 5, a DualShock 4 controller or a DualSense controller, uh, an imported physical copy or a digital copy of Kuronoki Seki downloaded from the Japanese PlayStation Network store, a PC with at least four gigabytes of memory, then either a capture card with the necessary capture card software installed or a good reliable internet connection and a PS4 or PS5 Remote Play installed from PlayStation.net. And we'll provide a link to that in the description below as well. And then last but not least, you're gonna need a copy of the Cold Steel Subs Kuro Overlay Program. Next, you'll visit the link in the description below from the Zerofield website to download the overlay program. Once you click on that link, you should see a page that looks similar to this one. And you click on right where it says, Download Overlay Program. Once you've downloaded the file, go ahead and extract the zero field overlay folder right onto your desktop. To initiate the game and overlay program, first turn on the console, and then we're going to initiate the program that will display the game on our PC. If you're capturing the game via PS Remote Play, you'll need to run the PS Remote Play program and log in with your PSN credentials to display the game from your console to your PC via the PS Remote Play program. If you're capturing the game via capture card, you just need to run the capture card software that came with your capture card. And with either of these two methods, you're gonna still need to be sure to connect a USB cable from your PC to the controller of your choice so you can control the game on your console while simultaneously operating the overlay program with your controller. To start the overlay program, you're going to double click where it says Cold Steel Subs. Now we're going to go ahead and start the overlay program on our PC. When you first start the overlay program up on your PC, you will um, see that it will load the latest version of the spreadsheet straight from zerofill.net. After you've started up the overlay program, uh, you should be ready to go ahead and start the game uh, and you should see the overlay right over your game. and your from this point forward, you're ready to start enjoying Legend of Heroes Kuro no Kiseki with the overlay program. When in the game, you'll be able to advance the to the next line in text on the overlay program as well as in the actual game just by simply pressing X. It'll advance both at the same time with one button press. If you ever get ahead one line, you can go back by pressing the L2 button or by pressing the left arrow key. And you can also advance one line with the right arrow key to make sure you're back on track. When you're on the field, uh, you're going to want to be sure to lock the text by pressing L3. That way you can attack and dodge without uh, inadvertently advancing the text. Whenever you come to a point in the game on a map when you have active voice dialogue, uh, we recommend pressing the right arrow key to advance the text instead of uh, confirming with X or else you're just going to dodge every time that you advance a line. Once you reach the end of the chapter, you're going to need to press tab to bring up the overlay options. Click up here in the drop down menu and then you'll select chapter one and then on introduction. And then you should be ready to start the next chapter. Now that we've gone over installing um, setting up and the basic operations of the overlay. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Corey to show some of the tips that we have and new features that this version of the overlay has. Uh, hello everybody, uh, this is Corey. We are a bit early into chapter one and what's about to happen is Ven and Anyas are about to receive their first optional side quest. So we're going to go through and I'm going to show you what happens when a side quest comes in that is completely optional and is not included as part of the main sheet. So the first thing that you'll notice here is this massive box in the middle. Um, so there will be a few times that this will appear throughout the spreadsheet, um, but as you can see behind it, 
that um, if I hide the overlay, there, Van himself is looking at a box that has the details of the request, and so we just decided to include the details in the same location. Uh, this same thing will happen with tutorials and some major instructions. And then here is the second request that we get here, and this is the request that we're going to be going to because this request will show us some of the other features. Since this first side quest is completely optional, uh, we have likewise decided that the player can choose whether or not they do it. Say if somebody wanted to keep going, they would simply press cross on their controller, and now we get the next instructions for the main story. However, if they wish to do the side quest, we can press square, and just like that, we are now in the side quests tab of the sheet. So uh, now we are going to be taking over, well, we're going to have Han and Bess take over, and we would continue into this side quest. So we would follow the instructions and go into Iota, which is this cafe right here. We'd go up the stairs and we would talk to Alicia here. So here, what we've got going on is a little moral choice in which uh, Van is trying to tell this, is trying to give this guy advice as to what he should do. He's returning some stolen goods, but he doesn't know quite exactly how he should go about it. So in exchange, Van is going to have to think about it and that's where this comes in. So this is the option selection screen, or the uh, where most of the moral choices are made throughout the game. And what we've done here is very simple. As you can see, there is a triangle choice that the game presents where it is return the money to the store and tell them what happened. Then there's a square choice, which is return the money without telling anyone what happened. Now, given that I'm a pathological liar, I will naturally be going with the gray choice here. So how do I get to this? Well, just like in game, I'm going to press square, and while that is going to tell the game that that is my choice, it's also going to tell the overlay that that's my choice. Meaning that, as you can see, we just jumped forward about 30 lines in the overlay, bringing us to the correct decision point. Uh, these decision points will be put all throughout the overlay, both where the game includes them, and also wherever there are scenes that are going to diverge based on an earlier choice that you picked, we will allow you to use the same process to jump to the correct alternative of that scene later in the game. So we really hope that with all of these new features, the updated overlay for Kuro will be a very, very smooth experience that will allow people to really get to enjoy the game as it was intended by Falcom. You can also access the combat overlay by pressing the tab key and then coming up and clicking on the button that says combat overlay. The combat overlay is going to display all your accessories items, equipment, quartz, and crafts, all in English, with all their effects also in English. And that about wraps it up. So this video showed you how to install the overlay, how to operate the overlay, uh, the tips to enhance your overlay experience, and all the new features that were added in the Kuro edition of the overlay. The spreadsheet and the overlay was made possible by the Zero Fill team and the Cool Seal Subs Overlay team. Uh, for the main story translation, of course, we had Corey Million Man and Kitsune. Uh, for text capture, it was Ren Time, Scotty, Xmas, and February Night. Uh, the editors were Pizza Frog and Kogir Omega. For side content translation, we had Hanske, Pilter, Kofi, Vess, Oni, and Kogir Omega as well. The overlay creators were managed by uh, RT and Zolvir. And last but not least, we have the combat sheet translation uh, with Fate and Solace. Um, if you have any questions uh, or any suggestions for the spreadsheet, uh, feel free to reach out to the um, Zerofield team at zerofield.net. And if you have any questions regarding the overlay functionality, reach out to them at overlaydevs at gmail.com. We hope that this video tutorial helps the Kuro experience for everybody to be the best it can possibly be. Thank you very much for watching.